Hi, I'm David Griffith, editor of Police Magazine. I'm here at National Police Week with Officer Michael Neal of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. Uh, Officer Neal is the October 2010 uh, Officer of the Month from the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. Officer Neal, tell us about the incident that led to your earning this award. Uh, it was May the 20th, 11.41 in the morning. Uh, two West Memphis drug interdiction officers made a traffic stop at the 275 on I-40. Uh, unbeknownst to them, they stopped two sovereign citizens, a father and a son team. Uh, on into the traffic stop, the son came out with an AK-47 and killed both officers. Uh, both officers were highly trained officers. Uh, they were also on the uh, SWAT team for West Memphis. Uh, later on, a manhunt ensued uh, about 119 call come in that they were in the Walmart parking lot. As I pulled into the Walmart parking lot, gunfire had erupted. They had the sheriff and the chief deputy pinned down behind their car. They were shot immediately. Uh, they were critically injured. Uh, I thought they were dead. And as I was approaching the vehicle with my uh, state-issued truck, the guys put it in reverse and tried to exit the parking lot. I made the decision at that point to ram the vehicle, to stop it. Uh, a gun battle ensued, and I had to use my state-issued M4 rifle to uh, stop the threat. What is a sovereign citizen? Uh, they're an anti-government group that's growing very rapidly here in the U.S., unfortunately. Uh, they're about 350,000 strong now across the U.S. And they have beliefs that uh, their constitution is different from ours and they don't have to follow our constitution or laws. What are some of the normal duties of an Arkansas wildlife officer? I mean, you're not normally in a gunfight in a Walmart parking lot as a wildlife officer, are you? No, sir, not every day. Uh, normal job performance is we do everything from general law enforcement to get, uh, you know, the Game and Fish Commission, mm -hmm. uh, making traffic stops. Uh, we check hunting and fishing license, boating registration. Uh, we write DWIs, boating, BUIs. We, we do a little bit of everything. It's a very complicated job. One of the things about your job is when you're out there in the woods and you're having to contact someone, Generally, they usually have a gun because they're out there hunting or fishing and they, they need the gun for either the snakes or whatever. And Absolutely. About 95% of the people we come in contact have some sort of a killing device. Uh, so our training is very extensive, very extensive firearms training, uh, fighting. Uh, you know, our, our backup is 45, to, 45 minutes to an hour away. So uh, virtually we are on backup. So we have to be able to handle whatever situation we come in contact with. But here you find yourself in a Walmart parking lot facing down known cop killing suspects. Yes, um, were you part of the manhunt or were, yes. did you just have, you were part yes. of the manhunt? Yeah, I, I live about an hour away from West Memphis when the call went out. Uh, that's in my district. It's actually in my post where I'm stationed. Uh, being state, we are state law enforcement. Uh, you know, we have the same powers as state police. So when the call came out, I felt it was my responsibility to, to respond. Interesting. You said you rammed their car with, with your car to, uh, I guess, draw attention away from the officers who were under fire and wounded. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, obviously, you don't train to do something like that. What gave you the idea of doing that? Well, I knew that we had to stop it at that point. In my mind, at the point we were at, they had already killed two officers, and they had just killed two more in front of me. I thought the officers in front of me were dead. So I knew that if we didn't stop it right here, we were going to lose innocent lives plus more officer lives. And, uh, you know, it was just a split-second decision. You know, we have the rest of our lives to critique, <laughs> but it's that split-second decision you have to make as an officer. and. Uh, you know, at that moment, that was the, fa the best thing I felt needed to happen was stop that vehicle. So the only way I knew how to do it was to hit it because they weren't going to stop. 
Well, it was a fortunate decision because the two officers who you thought were dead survived the incident, correct? Absolutely. As soon as I was approaching the vehicle, I started taking gunfire. I was fired upon before I fired a shot. So, uh, that matter of fact, if you watch the video and you take your eyes off the impact, you will actually see a skip around that hits right behind my truck as soon as I ram him. Hmm. I knocked him off balance and he was unable to land his first shot. Hmm. I took uh, around 15 rounds through the hood, dashboard, and windshield of my truck. Wow. All right. So you start to ram their vehicle and they are attacking you at that point? Yes. Yes. And how are you avoiding their shots? The first two shots I landed eliminated the driver's threat immediately. Uh, the, the gunfire started erupting into my truck. I would, I would lay down and as it would kind of come and go, I'd sit up and engage. The, the only thing that I could see in the vehicle was the gunfire from the se second suspect into my vehicle, and that's what I would engage. And he was doing the same thing to me. He could see my gunfire, and you can tell the way he was walking it across my windshield that he was trying to find me in the vehicle. Uh, there's there's holes in my headrest. I think there's around seven holes right around where I should have been sitting in the truck. He was that close. I, I actually received some of the shrap metal where the bullets were exploding into my back, my side, and my leg. Uh, I had a piece of glass went through my eye, busted my left ear drum, uh, wow. cut my forehead, and took all the skin off the top of my hand. I guess I held the steering wheel the whole time as I was firing with my right hand. In our academy, we were taught to shoot through our front windshields in a defensive mode and use our vehicles in whatever way we need. And you're shooting your M4 through the front windshield? Yes, I'm sitting hand. in the driver's seat returning fire. I, I didn't exit the vehicle until it was all over. Wow. All of my shots were fired through the front windshield. Now, do you have military experience? No, I do not. Is this the first time that you were ever under fire? Or? Uh, no, I've been in, I've been in uh, some gun fire exchanges before, uh, not to this extent. Uh, uh, this is the second time that I've actually had full trigger. But uh, my sheriff's department training that I had before, I was a firefighter. Uh, you know, in firefighting, you're, you're, you're under extreme pressure when you're in a burning house and you're breathing off a mass. So that, that kind of helped me with my, uh, my being able to think under fire pressure. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you.